future of the unique, spectacular and modest Finbos plants and the animals whose lives are linked to them depends on a reciprocal balance. The conservation of this tiny kingdom and its protected areas has become one of South Africa's most serious ecological problems because the loss of just one species can have fatal consequences for others which are inseparably linked to it. While the white-foreheaded Damaliscus is the most common race in South Africa, the Damaliscus osprey has, since its origins, been a biological rarity confined to the Cape area. Today, the largest group of Damaliscus ospreys is found in the Bonte Bok National Park, created in 1937. Given its reduced size, the park cannot accommodate more than 500 individual specimens without deteriorating part of the pastures, which is why they are regularly transferred to other protected areas where they have proliferated, creating new and numerous groups. Chakmas, or black baboons, share the territory with Damaliscus ospreys without any mutual interference. In the early hours of the morning and late afternoon, the Chakma baboons feed on fruit, herbs, leaves and other fruit of the earth, spending the middle hours of the day, the hottest and therefore the most energy consuming, resting high up in a tree. Baboons supplement their vegetarian diet with some animal food source. They eat insects, some birds and occasionally rodents or even young gazelles. But as predators they are very deficient and they only capture animals whose defense is to remain motionless on the ground, as is the case of hares or the offspring of Thompson gazelles. They do not present any danger to young de Meliscus ospreys but their mothers are very wary and remain vigilant while the baboons are roaming around the area. The Damaliscus ospreys have only one offspring per year. At present, none of the large African predators, with the exception of an occasional leopard, cohabits in the area of distribution, so their offspring do not have natural enemies. But during the first months of life, the young and their mothers keep their senses permanently alert, and any unexpected sound or movement makes them flee, running against the direction of the wind. Zebras have been reintroduced in some parks where they share their habitat with Damaliscus ospreys. There are currently some 500 specimens distributed across the different preserves which originated from the last 13 animals which in the Mountain Zebra National Park saved the species from becoming extinct in 1950. In the Cape Floral Kingdom, each species seems to be a biological rarity. 
There are plants and animals from an isolated region favored by climate and geology. And their reduced populations are delicate examples of the potential of biological diversity. On the 5th of June 1998, World Environment Day, the idea proposed in 1929 by the South African Wildlife Society became a reality. President Nelson Mandela announced that the Cape Peninsula would be converted into a national park. 30,000 hectares sheltering more than 2,285 plant species, 105 of which are endemic, and more animal endemisms than anywhere else make this the most biologically diverse preserve in the world. President Mandela called the new park South Africa's gift to the earth and noted that while in prison on nearby Robben Island, the view of Table Mountain included in the Cape area was a beacon of hope for him. The national park on the Cape Peninsula now protects the heart of the smallest and richest floral kingdom on the planet. For hundreds of unique species endemic to this remote corner of the world, it has become, as it was for President Mandela, a beacon of hope guaranteeing survival for future generations. Thank you.